welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming another holiday palette review video for you guys. I'm sure you guessed from the title we are looking at the ABH Prism palette today. I've been working hard to test this guy out for you guys so I can bring you guys a review. And so without further ado, let's get into that. Really quick though, I just want to mention I do have an active giveaway on my channel. We're going to go ahead and give away one of the ColourPop X My Little Pony palettes. So if you guys haven't picked that up yet, you can definitely go ahead and enter to win one absolutely free from my channel. I just want to reach out to you guys and say thank you so much for watching my videos and supporting my channel. I'll go ahead and link that video down in the cards for you guys so you can go ahead and enter that giveaway. Also, if you're new here, welcome. I do upload every other day, so you do get quite a bit of content from me. So I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. My goal is to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. I'm honestly still not sure if I'm gonna make it, but I'm gonna work my ass off and bring you guys really great videos no matter what. So anyway, enough blabbering, let's get into it. Here is what the palette looks like. I'm sure you guys have seen it a million times. This is the Prism palette. Honestly, very, very different for Anastasia. Not as far as the outer packaging because we saw this in the Modern Renaissance packaging as well as the Subculture palette. Now I did own the Subculture palette but I did end up sending that back. I will go ahead and link that video up in the cards for you guys to check it out. I went through why I'm returning the palette. Yeah, this is the previous packaging from the Modern Renaissance, but Anastasia does some really interesting stuff with their packaging. So here are some of my older palettes that I picked up from them. This is the Master palette. You know, a lot of gold in these ones, and I feel like this one fits right in, except that it has that velvety texture, but it's very trendy and beautiful, and I think they did a good job. It does get really dirty, though, and this black, I feel like, picks up even more junk than the pink and the green from the subculture. This is by the brand Anastasia Beverly Hills. Again, you guys have probably heard this a million times, but they do a lot of limited edition eyeshadow palettes and I love to pick them all up, you guys. The subculture is the first one I ever returned since I started collecting these, just because of how bad that palette was as far as the dustiness and stuff like that. So I did end up returning it, but Anyway, we're here to talk about this one. So they also launched a glow kit as well as two highlighter kits with this palette. But this is part of their holiday collection. I would say Anastasia is in the high to mid range as far as makeup palettes goes. This is a $42 palette. If you guys were curious as far as where you can get this, you can get it on the ABH website. I saw it on Macy's. You can get it on Ulta, Sephora. Basically available all over the place. It officially launched on October the 2nd on ABH's website and then everywhere else on October the 3rd. I was impatient so I ordered it right off of the ABH website and got it pretty much right away. This is limited edition and shipping was free. Again, once you spend $25 or more, you are able to get free shipping on the ABH website, just so you guys know. And as far as discounts go, I don't really ever see these go on sale on Anastasia's website, but the Sephora sale is coming up or it has happened or is in the process of happening when this video goes up. So you will be able to pick this palette up for 20% off. If you are part of the Sephora membership program, you might be able to take advantage of that. So the eyeshadows are made in the USA. There is a brush in here, which apparently I used today, so it's not actually in here, but that was made in the People's Republic of China, so don't get confused. The palette was made, the shadows were made in the United States. Just the brush is made in China. As far as the total weight of this palette, it is 0.7 grams, which I believe is pretty much what you get in most of the ABH palettes. Let me just double check here. Yep, it's the same amount of product as the Modern Renaissance, so that is a good thing to keep in mind in case you're wondering if it's the same amount. As far as shade selection and finish, this is a Luxe Holiday Eyeshadow Collection, 14 shades that range from universal neutrals to prismatic metallics, and it is a fully pigmented formula with ultra mattes, dual chromes, and metallic finishes, and includes that dual ended brush. Now I feel like these shades are definitely suitable for most skin tones. I wouldn't say that every skin tone can do a complete look with this palette because you might not have your favorite transition shades and stuff in here, 
Personally, with my skin tone, I can throw Eden in the crease, Unity in my brow bone, Saturn in the crease, parallel to smoke out the outer corner, as well as Obsidian. Also, I like to use the shade Lure in my crease, which is the beautiful mauve shade. That looks so good with my skin tone. So overall, I think this works as a single palette for my skin tone, but if you're lighter than me or darker than me, you might not be able to use this as a standalone palette. Just something for you guys to keep in mind, not saying there's anything wrong with that, just that you might have to pair it with some kind of other palette that you enjoy. Shelf life is six months, which is very standard for Anastasia Beverly Hills. I'm so surprised, but honestly, I've had the Modern Renaissance forever, and all these other palettes I've had for even longer than that, and the shadows are just fine. So I wouldn't worry about it too, too much as far as like, is this gonna be worth my money if it's gonna expire in six months? Um, order date was 10.02. I received the palette on 10.05. Anastasia Beverly Hills, has the most ungodly fast shipping on the planet and then they did overnight shipping for like $4.99 or something. I was gonna do it but then I was like meh I don't like to pay for shipping like I would rather wait a day than pay for shipping. Didn't do that just waited for it to come and it came really fast. This is cruelty free so if you are a cruelty free makeup lover you are going to be super super happy that you can enjoy this palette now as far as the application goes you guys I have mixed thoughts on this palette some days it works amazingly and I'm in love with the palette and some days I'm like are you fucking kidding me so it's really really tough for me because I really really want to love this palette but like today I have the hardest time so I use Eden on my crease as well as Saturn and Parallel to darken up the outer V. And then I use the shade Lucid all over my lid. And I just had the hardest time blending this palette. But then some days I've used, you know, Saturn and Eden and like Eternal. And it makes the most beautiful neutral eyeshadow look. And then there's days where like I try to use Spear and throne and like Spear just almost like blended away. I don't know. I'm trying really hard to like this palette. But it honestly reminds me a lot of the Kat Von D Saint and Sinner palette, especially with the shade Spear. And the shade in the Kat Von D palette is so much better. I did an eye look with that palette and that green shade just was so vibrant even though I had blended it into my crease. So I feel like I can get a really, really good neutral eye look with this, but I can do that with a lot of my palettes in my collection. So I was really hoping some of these unique shades would be a little bit easier to work with, but so far they haven't been. So that's something I wanted to mention to you guys. I was trying really hard today because I knew I was gonna film this review. I was like, you know what, just put it out of your mind that subculture happen. Put it out of your mind that, you know, this palette, you're comparing it to the Saint and Sinner. Put all of that out of your mind and just assess this palette based off of its performance. And I feel like it's 50-50. Like sometimes I really love the looks I come up with and sometimes I really don't like the looks I come up with. And sometimes I'm really just staring at it going like, what the fuck do I do with this palette? You know what I mean? So yeah, I wanted to mention that. And then wear time, I feel like today it wore really ungracefully. I don't usually touch up my eye makeup. So basically what I do is I do my makeup early in the morning, go about my day, and then I film at night, like six, onwards so I touch up my face makeup usually my eyeshadow just stays the same and I mean recently I've been reviewing so many eyeshadow palettes and I feel like my eyeshadow looks have been very very vibrant but today I'm just like oh god this eye look I'm like so ashamed of it I'm so glad you guys aren't like zoomed in like if I was doing a tutorial because honestly this eye look is a hot mess and I didn't do anything creative or out of the box it's just a very simple eye look but it was not something I was proud of and honestly I was like really disappointed by how this eyeshadow palette wore on me today. So since I had mentioned the Kat Von D Saint and Sinner palette, I figured I would bring it out and kind of hold the two up just so we could take a peek at it together. Now I know Liv Loves Her Makeup did a whole video comparing these two and you know they don't really look exactly the same. I think it's just those like neon shades that are really quite a standout. Um, but like I said, I feel like the Kat Von D shade definitely blended much better, was less powdery. It swatched horribly there, so let me try and build that up a little bit. But in my crease, it was really beautiful. 
Of course, Saturn kind of reminds me of Devil, so there are those two swatched next to each other, but the undertones are different, so these palettes are definitely not the exact same. I just think that those neon shades really draw you in and convince you that they are very similar, but really they're not that similar. But I do want to mention some shades that I really like in this palette. So like I had said, Eden honestly is very different to anything I currently have in my collection. It's like a beautiful peach, but it like is like almost a neutral, cool-ish tone peach shade. So it's not super warm, but it's a beautiful transition shade, I think. A little bit different. I love the shade Saturn. Of course, you guys know these warm shades are just like my bread and freaking butter. And then Eternal is beautiful. I love the texture. It's a beautiful, you know, shimmery bronze shade. And then Lure, even when I swatched this palette, I had mentioned I love wearing mauve shades in my crease. So I'm so pumped that they created some of those shades in this palette. Now, I basically mentioned almost all the mattes and not so many of the shimmery shades. I don't think Dimension is a very fun shade on my skin tone. I actually wore it yesterday and I just didn't really have a transition shade to pair it with in this palette. What I ended up doing was using Saturn and then using Dimension, but I think actually Dimension would have probably paired a little bit better with Lure because it's kind of that cool tone mauve shade. I paired Throne with Spear and that looked really strange as well. I kind of looked like a broccoli because my lid was like a dark green and then my crease was like a light green. So I don't know, sometimes I have a really hard time seeing good pairings with this palette. So I just want to tell you guys my authentic, genuine experience with this palette to see if you guys were maybe experiencing the same issues that I was. So you guys, the million dollar question, would I recommend this palette? Honestly, if you have the Saint and Sinner palette in your collection, I would not recommend this palette. I am an avid ABH collector, so that's why I felt pressure to pick this up. But if I honestly thought about it, I don't feel like I'm going to use this palette once I am done playing with it for review purposes. It's just not like speaking to me. Like it's so cool and interesting, but I'm just like, I don't feel like I'm going to use it. So I'm going to hold on to it and see how much I use it because I did get it from the ABH website. Now they're really good about returns. If I wanted to send this back, I'm sure I could easily do that. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm torn because I want to love it. But some days I just really don't love it. And this palette really doesn't love me back sometimes. So it's hard to say. I would say if you are a makeup beginner, I would not recommend jumping into this palette because some of these shades are so hard to like work with and it has a lot to do with color theory and it's a lot to do with your experience with eyeshadow so I would definitely caution you be careful it's not going to be an easy palette to work with but then if you cover up some of these crazier colors honestly it's like the most beautiful neutral palette so I almost wish that this had been the sister to the modern renaissance like if they took out like this green shade and this neon shade it would almost be like those tones that the modern renaissance was giving us but more like muted more goals less reds and it would have just been a really interesting neutral palette but I do like that they, you know, are forcing me to think outside the box. I'm really glad that they threw that neon in there. You know, I don't really reach for my electric palette even though I own it. So it's kind of nice that it's a neutral palette and then they threw that like fun pop of color so you could, you know, try and every, t every once in a while be out of the box. And I honestly think these neon shades pair really well with gold. So if you have my skin tone, it's a really great combination. I did a look like that pairing the neon in the Saint and Sinner with a gold in the Saint and Sinner and it looked really 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 beautiful. I'll pop a picture if I can find one for you guys. Definitely proceed with caution with this one if you are a beginner. I would honestly suggest just going with the modern renaissance. It's more easy to understand. Great everyday palette even if you are a makeup connoisseur and you're looking for you know if you're trying to decide between this one and the modern renaissance I would go with the modern renaissance. There's a reason ABH made that palette permanent. It's because it's good. It's because it's their best-selling palette I'm sure. Uh, as far as their eyeshadow palettes. Okay guys, that is everything I wanted to cover in my Anastasia Beverly Hills Prism Palette Review. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or brilliant insights. 
in the comments down below. Also, let me know if you guys picked this palette up and what you guys think of this palette. I love reading your comments and responding to you guys. I'm constantly on my phone checking my comment section because it genuinely makes me happy to talk to subscribers and makeup enthusiasts. And honestly, you guys are my friends. So I'm very, very happy to have you here. I'm so happy to share my passion of makeup with you guys. And yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below and enter that giveaway as well. Thank you guys. Bye.